The best way to think about this is, let me have your club. And when the club is right here, right. The farthest away from the target, right. you're the farthest away. Okay. And as it starts to point back you to the target, yeah. just go back with you'll it. You'll feel the weight of it and you'll kind like, of go with it. You want to go yeah. ahead of it. Just let yeah. it kind of That's just right. taste it a little bit, then boom, okay. you're right back there. Right. Move around a little bit. There you go. You just stay there and we'll feed you the balls. All right. There you go. Grab a couple just stock normal swings. Okay. Whenever you are ready. What's your miss going on right now? Uh, the most common is, is left to left. Left to left? Okay. Yeah. Now, at sometimes if I get ahead of it, it'll be right to right. Okay, I hear you. Do you drop kick like your long, long? Sometimes, yeah. sometimes. Uh, like hit a little bit wheel. chunky, yeah. a little heavy. Cubs falling out of the sky pretty fast. We're going to talk about you like you're not here. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> David came into us, a great guy, really high golf IQ. And he was, his diagnosis was he was sliding too much. Impact was getting janky on him. His miss was left to left. And you picked up on it right away that it had a little drop kick in there as well. So we had some fat shots in there. And you, you made a comment here that his club was dropping out of the sky. What do you mean by that? So what we mean by that is let's say you're in a, a backswing position here with the, the club head here and the grip here. It's when, when you start down, the club is dropping a lot faster than the hands are coming down, and it produces a lot of bad shots. It produces drop kicks, uh, blocks to the right, and if you get tired of that, you'll have to kind of flick it last second and hit left ball. So it's, it's a hard pattern to manage, especially if it gets dropping really quickly out of the top. And we just coined it dropping the club out of the sky, the club head out of the sky, because that's really what it looks like. It's just falling under. The ratio is just too yeah. severe with the club, right? And you could get on track, man, and say, oh, well, it's, that's into out, but normally the angle of attack isn't right, right. so they struggle with rough shots, et cetera. I'm taking through it, and then I'll show them. All right, so what's happening here is you kind of touched on it when you're telling us. So there's no movement there, and that's the uh, – See that 0, 0.0 there? Uh huh. That's your pelvis. We're going to look at the center, center of your pelvis. So right, okay. That dot there. Gotcha. So club's getting going. There's really no movement to the right at all. And then as you get near the top, that's when you start moving right. Okay, so my, 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 my shift is too late. Way too late. Do it so here. instead of recentering, you're still kind of yeah. moving right. right. And see, that's been, uh, trust me, for years, that, again, my concept was. Shift, 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 yeah. shift, 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 and it's way wrong. But, yeah. but that's years of doing the wrong thing. It's yeah. in my DNA. And then when that happens. So I see what you're talking about. Yeah, right at the top, I move, don't I? Yeah. yeah. And then when that happens, when you try to do all that forward movement on the downswing. Right. Get too far. Everybody that does that, just you don't have time to stabilize it. Yeah. If you stabilized it right here, you just wouldn't be over there enough. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at, so that's, you've got the center of your hips there about six inches in front of the ball that makes it tough to play that keeps your hands on your back leg right there mm -hmm. okay and if we look at where your pelvis is there i mean excuse me your rib cage so see that little frame that the yeah center of the pelvis center of the rib cage form right that's where the ball should sit at impact i got in you. between there i got you i remember seeing one of your videos on that yeah so we just got the ball jacked way back there mm -hmm. which that gives you this Either left ball or right ball, left ball, right ball. Can we play that army golf? 
So, all right, so you're saying that my ball position is off? No, I think we're going to fix most of that. It has to do with pelvis. The ball's motion. a little middle, but. It is a little back, isn't it? Yeah. Ball's a little back, but. Yeah, that ball is a little bit back. Yeah. Well, most of it's going to be fixed with the pelvis. Like, we want you right around here. Then we can bump the ball up from there. Yeah, there's no doubt. It's slightly back. So, what we got to first do is get this first half of the backswing dialed in. Right. Get you moving correctly so you can get that recenter so you can be on your left side right. early enough to stop it. Yeah, that right. might kind of cascade everything. Yeah, right. and then from down the line, then this is why the club drops under. So you got all that slide going on, right? right. That's a shallower. Right. Then let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see it. Can you see the, the change in direction here? Right. That's your hand path. Right. So we got to tighten that up and not make it so out towards the golf ball. Uh-huh. More and, down. And so dropping. Yeah. More down. More down. Yeah. Because you don't need two shallowers there. Right. You want the whole thing to kind of lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree with you. I had, if you could have seen me four or five years ago, I had developed this, I'm going to call it a windshield wiper move. Club came up across the line. Yeah, and yeah that's what it that. does. I yeah. mean, boy, I call, I call it, it windshield it whirling. Wiper. Yeah. It's like so whirling. now I'm a lot better now, Yeah. but I'm not, I mean, like you say, when I talk about the guys on tour shallow, when you watch it, that hole as a unit goes down. Yeah, it's not just the club. Lowers. The yeah. whole unit comes down. Yeah, and I'm yeah. obviously and not doing that. part of the reason you're doing it is because your right arm's going about 105 degrees. Too far. Yeah. yeah. So because that, that's, that's, that's another thing I've tried to work on. And I, I, I just. We'll do it. I have trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have trouble just, doing it. Just start through. with this. Get this, your top of your belt going a little bit to the right. That's it. Yeah. That's your takeaway spot feeling. And then go right from there. there. Yep. And then from there, turn. Yep. That's back. it. So we had a little bit of technical difficulties in this video, mainly that I forgot to press the right buttons. So <laughs> There's a lot of, lot of buttons in there. <laughs> There's a lot of buttons there. But so you're only going to get one view during this video, but we'll explain it as we go along. So when we suited him up and captured his swings, what David was doing, what was so common, what we see so often in videos is, his idea of being fairly centered at the start of the swing and then gradually moving everything over to the right and then moving everything forward in the downswing. And that was creating nearly, I think some he actually did go seven inches forward, seven inches of hip slide from where he started at impact or from where he started address to where he was at impact. Yeah, that's the everything to the right, everything to the left. It's this kind of wooden motion without the recentering and the stretch, you know, in the mm -hmm. middle of the swing. So it's... Um, it's not a very dynamic pattern, is it? No, and it well, it makes it makes sliding almost a guarantee. You're either going to be slid or hung back. Yeah, because you don't have anything to kind of get over there against and then brace up on. Exactly it. right. It's going to feel like you're kind of bumping it right uh, early, and then that's it. Let's do uh, let's do a ball no ball form yeah. on this one. <clears throat> see that. Do uh, like no ball right now? So he, we're going to put a ball down, then we're going to move it out of the way, and then just have you feel like you're making that move. Okay. So we, it'll capture. I got you. It just has to think there's a ball there. I got you. So let me address. Do I need to address just it? Just set up to it. Yeah. Yep. Now put it a little more forward than normal, about underneath your left pec. Yep. Okay. All right. So let's see some movement off the ball there. Hold okay. on a second. All right, get 50-50 with your weight. Don't lean on your left foot quite so much. There you go. Okay. Now go ahead and go. Get over a little, you could probably go a little more. So well, you're an inch forward there. Yeah, you reversed it too quick. Ride this out a little bit longer. Okay. It, like when the arm gets over your head, that's when it kind of circles okay. back around. Best way, best way to think about this is, let me have your club. When the club is right here, right. farthest away from the target, right. you're the farthest away. Okay. And as it starts to point back you to the target, yeah. just go back with you'll it. You'll feel the weight of it and you'll kind like, of go with it. You want to go yeah. ahead of it. Just let right. it kind of That's just right. taste it a little bit and then okay. boom, you're right back there. Right. Kind of real lazy on this one. If you over overcook it, it wouldn't be the bad, worst thing. Hold on one second. Okay. Don't want to hit it, right? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Make it go ahead and hit it. Just, just tap. It's fine. All right. I didn't see much move off. Oh, 
Nothing off. Practice, the one you paused on was really good. Yeah, give it a okay. give it a <laughs> yeah. give it like yeah, a, if I don't have to hit the ball, I do great, right? Yeah. Give it a bump turn. Yeah. It's gonna feel more yeah. It's gonna feel like it stays over there a little longer once you bump it. Yeah, the turn will recenter it. That makes sense. Okay. There you go. Yeah, your right shoulder will pull you back over there. Okay. There you go. Really exaggerate this one. I'll do my best. Okay. There we go. There you go. 1.4 inches when the club's by your foot. Perfect. That's Is that good? That's exactly what Rory does. Okay. That's how early it needs to happen. Let's see what happens after that. Might overdo it. Right there. 0 0.3, there 0.4 at the top. So when we talked about 1.4 inches and then at the top, you couldn't see the top, but at the top it was 0 0.03 inches. What we're referring to is the center of his pelvis. And if you've seen any of our videos, you know we track the center of the chest and the center of the pelvis. And like so many great players do, really as the hands are passing the leg, they're moving that center of pelvis over an inch, inch and a half right off the bat. And we use Rory as a reference because he was familiar with Rory Swain and we talked about it before the lesson started. So it was, it was something to him to kind of, you know, he knew what that swing looked like and he could see it now. And then he saw himself make those same movements. So it's an early movement to the right as opposed to what he was used to doing. No movement to the right early and then a movement right late. Exactly. It's it's the whole athletic movement thing. It's a shift, turn, shift, turn. Right. That's the motion to start ramping up the speeds. And, and later on in the video, we'll look at the ground forces. But that's what he was lacking, right? He, he never had that right so he could come back toward the middle and then go the other way. Yeah, and it's not timing dependent whatsoever. In fact, it's, it's way more detrimental to your timing to be still and then to move right late, even when you think you're being centered, than it is to move right early, recenter at the top, which was that point zero three at the top, back to zero zero, and then move forward. It's way more dynamic, way more natural, because you do it in pretty much every other sport. You do it when you walk. Yeah, it's natural kind of rhythm and timing mm -hmm. when you have that shift, turn, shift, turn. And you can feel it. We've done drills with, you know, you get the club kind of swinging back and through this way. You'll start to feel that naturally. And it, it really feels effortless if you hit a golf ball like that. That's exactly Good. what should happen. That felt exaggerated. Now, I say point three. Just show me again what I'm looking at. Right here? Uh-huh. That's point one. That's recentered. See how it gets? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Center of the yeah. hips. Yep. Okay. Good. And the whole point of the reason that's important, you'd be recentered at the top, is you can feel like you don't go forward anymore after right. that. Right. Now is when you're used to shoving forward. Right. Exactly. Right. That's why you're you're going way out there over six inches. Which I'm still doing that part. Yes. I got to stop that. Yes. As, as soon as I feel any movement back left, I need to stop. Right. Yeah. And, turn. and just turn. Yeah. Exactly right. Okay. That was good on the back swing. You know, it's really unfair that the really top players do this instinctively when I pick up a golf club. So we're going to do this one in parts, right? Take it up to the top. Where do you feel your weight there? Mainly, there's a little bit on my left ball of my feet, mostly in, you know, inside my right. Now you need to go more on the left foot. More on the left I want foot. you to feel 50-50 at the top. He, he felt left already, is what he said. Yeah, just feel 50-50. Yeah, he was uh, still on his back foot. Oh, I got it. That feels more closer to me. Okay, yeah. now downswing from there. Yeah, that feeling. There you go. I wasn't falling under as much. Damn. All right, so all you did there was just move straight forward. See that? Yeah, I didn't yeah. go to the right any, did I? Yeah. God, yeah. Oh. You angled that back leg in too much and the front leg, really. Yeah. Right? Yep. <coughs> all right, go again. Okay. So his first attempt here to do this was it's very common, actually. Instead of moving to the right early, he moved forward. Yeah, he was trying to cheat it. He was trying to cheat it, right? He was trying to get that recenter, and he just basically short-circuited everything else leading up to that. Yeah, so he, he left out that first shift. So now all of a sudden, he's even more forward at start. 
Mm-hmm. Now, if he makes his normal shift forward, he's going to be way too far forward. So <laughs> you're, you're playing within a range. So if you use up all the forward range on the backswing, now you've got a problem, right? You either got to stay where you are or shift through the line. There, there's no middle ground there. So that problem, we see it a lot when we first try to get people to do this motion is that, oh, yeah, I need to recenter. I'll just do it in the beginning. Yeah, and it's not bad when you do this when you're learning it because, okay, he was at one end of the extreme. Now he hit the other end of the extreme. Now he kind of knows where we start to kind of funnel him towards the middle where he ultimately wants to play golf from. Nope. Oh. E6. You're so used, and it's such a common thing we see, you're so used to fitting all this movement into that little quarter of a second downswing. You, you're just not using that big time you have in the backswing. I think I've got this elbow thing in the wrong place. Yeah, let me fix it. Yeah. How in the world? Got the knee. Manage that. That That's a knee up there. That. Come yeah. off the knee. That was How in the world did you get a knee on your elbow? I don't know, That's man. Freaking. That's one of those great things you can do instinctively, yeah. like the training. Yes, yeah. Houdini. Do uh, do this for me, just as a drill. Take, uh-huh. put your feet a little bit closer together. Uh huh. Step, swing, and then hit from there. Okay. So feet a little close together. A little step to the right, and then yeah, that kind of feeling. You got to get that off the ball feeling early yeah, you know really. the funny thing is i tell you when i first started playing like most people i tried to teach myself because i was i was decently athletic you know i said no i can do this and i got to a certain level and couldn't get any better so i started taking lessons oh, from a guy yeah. yeah who worked with a couple of tour players interestingly enough he had been a a a, a, um, a student of sam bird oh sam hogan's teacher well, not Hogan, but uh, Jimmy Ballard is the guy that worked with Bird. That's right. Bird. Bird played with Babe Ruth, played baseball. When he was done, he played professional golf. Damn near won the PGA. Byron Nelson beat him in the final. That's right. So Bird's concepts, this guy had. I see. At any rate, he always taught me to get behind the ball. Yeah. And I played some good golf there, but obviously I've changed where I started sliding so uh-huh. much that. So Sam Bird, is it Sam Bird? Sam Bird. He was Jimmy Ballard's teacher basically? Yes. Bird was his assistant and got all his theories uh, from Bird. And Bird, you know, talked about some of the stuff with Hogan and that connection yeah, and yeah, all that. Yeah, 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 God, Ballard made But I think Hogan problems. said he did things he didn't really do if you look at the video. Yes, yeah. 100%. Like well, he, he talks about this. Well, hell, when he, he addresses his right arms out here. Yeah. Yeah. soft, exactly. you know. All right, watch, watch this right here. So obviously, by having you do that step, you have to move to the right. Right. That's awesome. All right, here's what's getting you in trouble. So pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. You see the base of this red line here is your center pressure. So it's getting back there to 50-50 early. You see this late move. As you finish the top of your swing, uh-huh. this knee is moving this direction. Too far inward? Yeah. Okay, so watch what happens. When that knee gets in and pinned underneath you and you start momentum forward, uh huh. See how pinned it is right uh-huh. here? Yeah, I see. Yeah. And watch this this yellow arrow here. See how flat that yellow arrow stays? Yeah, it does. It, should, no, be, it should be spiked should up be here spiked. out of the screen. Should be force pushing this way. Yeah, because you don't have that because you're, right. you're pinning it right here right. and you just kind of have to slide through it. Right. So here, Boom, as you feel that 50-50, get this right. leg back underneath you. So we talked about some arrows here. So let me, let me kind of draw you what's happening here. So, well, actually before that, um, you got to be careful when you're watching and trying to learn something and you're hearing folks talk about pressure and how Overseas. pressure should move and ground forces should move from folks who don't measure it, folks who don't own the equipment and Never don't had measure one. it. Because you're just taking a wild guess. Like, David here had his body weight and his mass way forward in the golf swing, almost seven inches. And you're going to see right now he had next to zero pressure increase at all. And it's just a pure guess to look at what the body's doing to think, okay, that correlates to where your pressure is. So just be careful when you're doing that. So what we've got here is we've got a force plate under each foot. And... At address, everyone, right, everyone produces or has a body weight, and that body weight puts vertical force into the ground. There's, We use a yellow arrow for the uh, 
front foot and then a blue arrow for the back foot. And then if you add both of those together, together, you get a center of pressure. So everybody at address looks something similar to that. Okay. Yeah. You're standing there talking, you've got your body weight pushing down into the into the ground. Okay. You have that amount of arrows there. Now what David was doing was very difficult to do in the sense that at impact, his arrows were all half that. So he had un essentially unweighted himself or unforced himself to where they were half of this at impact, and that's not good. No, and his spiked actually after the ball, Yes, which you definitely don't want. So a lot of long drivers, you'll see they, they spike it kind of at this point in the downswing, mm -hmm. and then they might be off their feet a little through the shot with the driver you see a lot right, of times. Right. But he wasn't getting any spike halfway down, which we would like to see. He was actually getting him after the ball. And that, basically at that point, he's not getting – much utilization at all from the ground forces. No, and on video, it looks like, again, his hips were way out there forward. It looks like he would be doing that, but it wasn't the case at all. And all of his speed was coming from just muscular effort. Yeah. And he was missing this huge piece to producing speed and making the swing easier for him. So I've been thinking about this a lot as far as, you know, using muscular effort mm -hmm. versus doing things the right way. And and this whole swing, you can swing however way you want. And I've been thinking about this idea of throwing a ball because I played baseball. So if I had a ball and Mike had a ball, baseball, and he's bigger than me, obviously, but he's going to use brute force and he's going to try to throw this ball as far as he can. If Mike's shot puts it, it's just say it goes 30 <laughs> feet. Well, that's his technique. Okay, he, he, he throws it the way he wants to throw it. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing my throw. Yeah, throwing your throw. <laughs> Without you know, so swing however you want to swing right, right? correlates to golf. But I'm going to throw it like I would throw a baseball and kind of externally rotate my arm and whip my arm. I'm going to throw it three times as far as Mike yeah. with less effort, and that correlates to this, right? Mm -hmm. So you you can do it just any old way, but it doesn't mean you're getting any help, and you're probably going to be swinging a lot harder to get less output. And if you're not huge, big, and strong, yeah, and you're doing the shot put, yeah. now you can kind of see how much you're leaving on the table. Yeah, and if you're a guy that feels like you should be getting more out of your swing, like a pretty good on-plane swing, right. and you're still not getting anything out of it, a lot of times this is the missing piece. Understand the timing of these forces and when and how you're doing it. And um, sometimes you can't figure it out unless you do get it measured. I like that shot put. I've had some three-pointers that felt like shot puts. <laughs> I had some bricks. <laughs> okay. so just, we're just going to go to the top. Just go to the top. Hold on one second. That was nice. Get the club comes down cleaner too. It doesn't yeah. whirl out of the top. There you go. You have to have something to make that club steep and late. Yeah, I sure do. And it's, I mean, I, I believed it was my body motion that was causing me because I couldn't, I've hit balls for yeah. hundreds of hours with shit in the way out here. I can do that, but then when I get on the course, it goes right back. We just, say it, we're talking about it goes that right back. Two I'm hours like, ago. There's, there's all something the I'm doing that's forcing the club back. Exactly. There. You're good enough, you can miss whatever you put down. Exactly there. Yeah. right. So let's get right on cue. Be smart. All right. Live speed to the top. Say again? Live speed to the top. Okay. All right. Where's your knee? Too much in, huh? There you go. Yep. There you go. So you, that knee should come in. It's just got to get back out from underneath you. There you go. Right, it's got to move out there. Yeah. Good. Is that a little better? So that's the movement, okay? Now we're going to corral that in into a certain area. All right, do that again. I'm going to keep doing that. Club come out better on that one? Yeah, it was pretty good, actually. All right, set up to it? Mm-hmm. So put your fist out here beside your leg. Mm-hmm. That's how much room you got to play in. Mm-hmm. Okay? You're going to do everything you just did. You're just going to do it behind this noodle now. Okay. Okay? Gotcha. Now that's a way different feel for sure. You can cover four inches. That's about what that is, about four inches. You cover that pretty quickly, right? Let's look at that one. All right, starting to get a mini spike coming. Any spike, I love huh. it. <laughs> That's better than nothing. Is 
So really, that yellow arrow should be way above the red one. No, they both should be climbing. Yeah. What's, that's you standing there, mm -hmm. not doing anything. Mm -hmm. It's higher than when you're doing something. Wow. Yeah. You're just leaving a lot of yards on the table. So you see a, a noodle there, right? One of our cheaper training aids. We've got some expensive, some expensive stuff in the warehouse, and some some not so expensive. You're gonna so. be selling branded noodles. Yeah, AMG a noodle, <laughs> high tech noodles with a video. <laughs> so the reason we use this stuff, all of it, is feedback. The gear system, the video cameras, the force plates, everything we've got in there is a form of feedback. Uh, and this noodle is actually a form of feedback. It's called external feedback, but it gives the golfers a range to play in. Mm -hmm. So they know the outside edge of the range. So we'll usually put it about a fist from the lead hip and hit, get that noodle there and say, okay, you know, get up to that and then kind of brace against it so you don't go through it. Right. And without any kind of feedback, golfers are just left to their feels. And a lot of times how they feel and what's going on is so far apart. Especially with something new. Yeah, they, they're never going to do it. They're never going to do it either enough or um, – They'll do it too little or way too much, yeah, or right? At the wrong time, yeah. They just don't have a way to know if they did it correctly or not. And to me, that's the basis of learning something. You've got to know if you did it wrong. Piano is easy. Hit the wrong note, doesn't sound right, <laughs> right? If you have an ear, I couldn't tell. That's the that's immediate feedback. I I, I try to play piano. Yeah. I'm not great at it, but I know if I hit the wrong note, I know yeah. that's a, that's feedback. I'll stop. Well, with the noodle, that's your wrong note in piano. Mm -hmm. You hit that. You hit that noodle, you hit the wrong note. Now you know to stop. Say, okay, what's the right note? Well, the right note is just to get up to that noodle and not crash through it. Yeah, and we like using these kind of real low-tech, buy-em-anywhere type things because when the golfers leave us, they're not going to be able to use force plates or gears, and they have to have a way to practice this. We like correlating. Okay, the evaluation is this is what we got to change. This is what he needs to work on. And now he's got these tools that he can pick up on his way home or pick up when he gets home. That's his medicine. That, that, that's his medicine. That's what he takes every day. That's how he fixes it. All right, bring this thing down, halfway down and stop. Okay. All right, where do you feel your weight there? More left. It's 50-50. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So obviously where I'm sensing I'm at, I'm not yeah. there. So it should be more over here? Yep. Wow. And yet, not, not into that. And so the right. weight's there, the pressure's there, but I'm not that's way right. over there. That's yes. right. Yes. That's right. Okay. That's what you're trying to deal. Exactly right. There we go. Now you're using that front side to brace to all break that. Break it. Like a break as soon as I come down. Well, that's one thing I notice when I look at the, at the tour players. Once their hip hits, that, the hip is actually moving back and around this way. Uh -huh. It doesn't keep going out over the ankle. Right, right. No. The center of the pelvis doesn't back up. Right. But you got to remember. Well, it's rotating. The, the pelvis yeah. is turning like this. Right. So that center is tilting. always moving the back side. Right. Right. Around. And it's yeah. tilting this way, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly is. right. I'm still into the noodle, huh? Yeah, you're still knocking that noodle. You're doing the I right can't. movements now. It's hard to tell you how weird that feels to me. I've been sliding. You're gonna have so to long. feel like you don't go forward. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I gotta, but and yet get my weight there though. It'll get there. I can't stay here, you know. Am I still into it? Let's see. I mean, you might be in the finish. I mean, yeah, I'm just looking in the, at in the fall too. Pre impact. You're, yeah, you're gonna be into it in the fall too. A little bit there. That's pretty good there. All right, we're starting to get some spikage now. We got like a small baby deer. Uh-huh. Wow. Well that's that is more for sure. Yeah, yeah. We, we we want this before impact so you can use it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let me tell you where this should be happening at. This should look like this. Right there. Oh man. Wow. You're getting there. Boy. Well, that's why I came over here, see? Yeah. <laughs> that, what you're doing now is one of the hardest things to uh, fix on your own because you don't have a frame of reference for it. Exactly. So you heard us talk about spiking before, and we were talking about when those arrows that we drew earlier are spiking. They were spiking after impact. Now he's spiking them before impact. We're starting to see those arrows, that lead foot arrow actually, rise up before impact. Now it's a matter of 
even pushing that further and have it to start to spike or at least get high, close to spiking, somewhere when the shaft is vertical oh, and the downswing. downswing. So about mid-downswing is when you want to have those arrows really up there because that gives you enough time to take that energy and transfer it to the club. You don't want it like all spiking right at impact. Or certainly after him. It'd be like snapping Mike with a towel. It's an overused analogy, but it's the same thing. I want to spike the force here, not speed right, it all right. the way there, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going, woo, and that end of the towel has time now to hit Mike. With some exactly speed. right. That's trying to look better. How was that? I felt right like there. I stayed more. I felt like I got over, but I didn't go, didn't slide too okay. much. Is it any better? Let's, let's look. And let's do a gear too, just to double check on the motion. So that leg's way more underneath you now. Uh-huh. See so how yeah. the arm's coming down, right. the leg comes under you? That's better, it's not dropping as fast either. You know, getting the hands up to the front leg now. All right, before we leave what we're doing, watch this right foot. Uh-huh. Right. Where's, it, where's that moving to? Well, it's rolling. It's going to the heel. No, you're picking your toe up and it's going straight to the heel. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's why you get that little flick at the bottom of the That's side. an anchor for that right hip. I see what you're saying. So I need to be really up on the inside yes, ball. Yes, yes. Like, like this. I'm coming, my knees are the same right, right here, right? Right, And then it's... Right. So that, that. right. That allows you to get that right hip through. And then look, right. my hands will be here instead of yeah. like that a little bit. That's okay. why you, it's a little bit flicked. So what we're talking about there is how the knees move, and, and a lot of our lessons are based around how the legs and the knees move. We kind of build swings from the ground up a lot of times. If they don't have an understanding of how the legs and the knees move, the hips aren't going to work right, right, and the torso's not going to work right, and that bleeds into arm and the club. So that particular spot in the swing we do a lot is golfers think they need to be like pushing off the right foot through the ball or, or keeping the heel on the ground. And the problem with that is it doesn't allow the left leg to straighten and the right leg to bend properly or lead and trail you could use. And when they do, when you don't do that, it locks the trail hip in place. And a lot of times they have to throw the club head to hit the ball. Yeah. And the hip tilts on gears won't be in the correct spot, which also causes some issues with the release. So when the knees change, it allows the left hip to get a little higher, the lead hip to get higher, the trail hip to get a little lower. The hips will rotate on the correct plane. That drives the hands out in front where they should be, and they get some club face control. So that, that's a huge deal, learning that little dance move with the knees. And uh, that was a, a example of it there. Yeah, we, we see a lot of golfers who will try to, and there's some ideas out there to try to do this. Where When the shaft is coming down and it's, the shaft's parallel to the ground on the downswing, that's when you shove forward and push off, right? All that push off the back foot does is send pressure and force under the back foot. And it straightens the right leg. And it straightens the right leg, takes it out of the front foot, and for 99 times out of 100, it's going to restrict your ability to turn. It's not going to increase it. Yeah, and then when you do that, now you're talking losing control of the king of the swing, the club face. Yeah, that's exactly right. To move pressure forward, it's as easy as just taking pressure off yeah. the opposite foot. You just got to lighten up that foot. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's shifting pressure right there. Right. So right. you're not you're not using mass to do that. Now you're using actual pressure, which is way faster. Right. Good. All right, let's do that again. I want to capture that on here and see how that looks. No wonder, no wonder I suck so much, man. It's it's just a lot of moving parts in a real short amount of time. <laughs> yeah. That's it's true. hard to feel that stuff. All right, hold on one second. Take Full speed or? No, still at full cruisy speed again. Okay. Good. Well, was I getting off the back? Yeah, the really good. Okay. Really good. So that's going to probably be a big part of it, don't you think? Yeah. We Just ate all those peeps, by the way. Yeah. They were make, good. Making sure that, <laughs> that that gets up a yes, little bit. Yes, exactly and Making like sure that. I'm breaking here. Yes. That's got to produce the right movements, right? That's how you miss that noodle. Yeah. yeah. If that, that heel stays down, right. you ain't getting that left hip out of the way. There you go. That gives you the shaft lane. Yeah. There you go. That motion right there. Mm-hmm. I like it. 
There you go. That's awesome. See, that puts the handle more forward. And mm -hmm. What's that, uh, the, is it the heart rate thing? When people die at flatline, yeah. what's that called? Uh, e like an EKG? Yeah, EKG. EKG, would, your, yeah. EKG your, your pressure EKG is not flatline there. Yeah. You got some you got life to, back in some it. life in there. <laughs> <laughs> beep, beep, right? Yeah. Boop, boop. Yeah. Boop, boop. yeah, so I think that's kind of it. I've got to focus on getting the right heel up while breaking really this one so I don't just push myself yeah. over. Yeah. David, again, super high golf IQ, has been around a lot of really knowledgeable people in the game and just got to a point where – you know, the golf swing changes so gradually sometimes that you just wake up one morning and you're like, how did I get here? And it was kind of where he was at. He he had the wrong concept on a couple things, and, you know, he's a practicer. He likes to practice, so he's just you just keep ingraining those wrong concepts the whole time while you're trying to improve. And sometimes those things butt heads, and you wind up kind of lost. Exactly. If you have a poor concept, that bleeds into the golf swing mm -hmm. every single time. So to kind of wrap it up, you know, if you, we said this before. If, you, if you've if you got a swing that you feel like is pretty good, I feel like you had a pretty decent golf you swing when you walked in. You just can't figure out how to get over the hump, especially if it's underpowered. Like something's going on where you're just not getting the clubhead speed you feel you should have. A lot of times it's in the timing of these ground forces and when and how much you're pushing on the ground that allows you to get the clubhead speed you should get and the power you should get. So come down, let us measure you, or go somewhere you can get measured. We'd mm -hmm. love to have you come down to the warehouse, and, and we'll get you on everything we have and see if we can help you. Absolutely. Hey, guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a like. Also, if you have any questions about today's video or you have an idea of a video that you want us to shoot, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. We read every single comment. We also respond to the comments. So again, leave us a comment if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see. Now, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. We have videos coming out every single week and we don't want you to miss one. So by clicking subscribe, that ensures you're notified right away when a new video comes out. And hey, if you want to add instant distance to your drive, and we all do, everybody wants more distance, go ahead and click the link in the pinned comment below. You're going to see a link. Click on it. It's going to take you to a page. You're going to enter your name and email address. We're going to send you an email where you're going to get access to instant distance, which is a video training that we put out. We know it's going to help you. We know we're going to see you farther down the fairway.